How's it going, Gray Boys? It is week two, and we started off the season really well. 1-0, we beat a good ranked UCF team that was in the playoff last season. And along the way, we found a couple of incredible new freshmen on the team. RJ Rivera and Chris Rutger absolutely went off. Maury State didn't do so bad. The defense was okay. But this is going to be our first real test. Again, we play the number one, two, and three teams in the nation all this season. All, I think, in the first half of the season. And Auburn is going to be supposedly the easiest based off of rankings. Now, we will go on the road. Auburn is favored to win. And the Tigers are a B-plus overall, which will land them near the 90 mark, if not a little bit above it. So while they haven't played a game yet, it certainly uh, should have us a little bit worried. And their quarterback is the preseason Heisman favorite. So that could be a little bit worrisome as well. But let's just do our recruiting right away and get that out of the way. Again, if you're unaware, we are using Fang's recruiting generator. So that's why we have some ridiculously high overall players. And I am curious right off the bat. Are we going to have a chance to pick up any of these crazy good guys? Christian Grimmel, the 92 overall Juco transfer. Uh, what's our bonus points? Can we improve that stadium atmosphere? Not really. Conference prestige is really nice. Uh, we would ha just have to hope that the Big 12 starts to do really poorly, but we'll keep him on the board just for like another week. It's pretty much the same thing with Elliot Erdman, the 90 overall center. How about Aaron Williams? 87 overall defensive end, not really going to have a chance to catch USC, but who knows? Maybe championship contender is just an A. If we can get that up to an A plus, we get a bunch of extra bonus points. And if USC starts to lose, they'll lose some. So I don't know. This seems risky to hold on to these guys. But if we go all in on the offensive and defensive lines, we could be competing for a national championship next year. As far as the other guys we were giving points to, uh, Keith Bryson, the 79 overall guard. We've jumped ahead of Texas, so we have the lead there. We are gaining on Texas A&M with Austin Ash, the 77 overall tackle. Losing 100 a week to Clemson, uh, gaining 170, and Markel Burton will jump him up to that 700. So we should be in a decent spot with a few guys. And now I think we'll just try to look at whatever we can do. So minus 600 means we could catch up with Drew Allen and an 87 overall tight end. You better believe we're going to give it a shot. Chris Miller, we're losing 850. So there's really no chance that we can catch that incredible recruit. And we only have 200 points left, but we could gain with both uh, Timon Brooks and Damian Coppett. Obviously, I'm going to go with the middle linebacker because it's such an important position in this game. But that's just uh, an easy way to get our recruiting out of the way. Again, we could have potentially like three guys will remove 700 points from next week. It all just depends really what happens in this game against Auburn because it will fully set the tone for this season. Now, I do have something that I want to announce. Players like Chris Rutger, Avery Binkley, Durham Finch and Durham Finch Jr., we're all players that were named by tier two and three channel members, but those are recruits that we had gotten committed to us. So it was guaranteed that they would be on our team from here on out. And this is going to be available throughout the season, every season on a first come first serve basis. Any tier one or higher channel members will be able to name a prospect. Now, the reason that that's not just uh, kind of screwing over the higher tier channel members is because there are no guarantees that we would be able to pick up any of these players, but it gives those who only want to spend a dollar a month the chance to get their names into the dynasty. And there's always the chance that either we could pick up that player or they could go to a really good program or just become maybe a Heisman Trophy winner or a national championship winner. We're going to start this immediately. So if you already are a tier one or higher channel member, take a look in the community tab and find the post or potentially posts that this is referring to and go ahead and pick a prospect to change the name of. Again, the same naming rules apply. Nothing too cheeky. No Mike Hawks. No bender overs. We want realistic names. And these are all, of course, on a first come first serve basis. With that announcement out of the way, let's take a quick look at the top 25 polls. See if anybody's playing ranked matchups. Obviously, we are playing uh, number three Auburn, who is getting first place votes. Otherwise, we've got Oklahoma on the road at Nebraska. 
Uh, we would love to see Nebraska win that one because it hurts the Big 12, and we desperately need that. Any other ranked games? TCU plays UCF, so we are rooting for the UCF team that we just beat last week. Other than that, there are no more ranked matchups to worry about, so we can just go ahead and get into ours. So coming in here, Auburn, a 90 overall team, 91 offense, 88 on defense. Uh, I have no idea what to make of that other than this is going to be difficult no matter what. Let's just put on the green pants today. And for Auburn, they're a pretty classic team, but I do like that orange face mask on the home alternate. So I think that that's what we're going to go with for the Tigers. Well, we don't have any sort of stats for them to know what's happening, but their top players we can figure out only at the low 90s, but they must have a lot of depth. The right tackle, a strong safety, and then the kicker all at 91 overall. But then for the team to be ranked at 90 must mean that that depth goes really far into the team. So hopefully our mid 80 overall guys can do something, if anything, today. So it's a late summer evening at Jordan-Hare Stadium. We're going to need a miracle or just some really solid gameplay to pull this one off. Tails never fails, and it hasn't failed us yet this season. So we're going to elect to kick this ball off with just the three-mile-an-hour kind of crosswind. And the Auburn faithful are already pretty excited for this one. This is a huge way for them to kick off their season. They field the ball again. We don't have a great kicker. And some broken tackles lead them out actually inside the 25. So it'll be John Jackson, the senior quarterback and preseason Heisman favorite, leading these guys out to open this one off. A broken tackle on the counter play. Leads to eight yards. Auburn immediately going in the hurry up. I definitely have to worry about these guys. We're going to try to press with our limited coverage. And quarterback's going to scramble. We'll see. Can we make the Heisman favorite fumble? No. He breaks a tackle and then gets pushed out of bounds. And man, they really are bringing this pressure and they are bringing it quick. First and 10, expecting another handoff. They do, I missed the assignment. London's there to get the stop, but it's another seven yards. My goodness, these guys are absolutely cruising in this area. Second and three, expecting another run. We brought the blitz and it'll be a tackle for a loss to put them back across midfield. George Smith, the defensive end, able to stop that one for a loss, which is absolutely phenomenal. And on this one, we're stepping back, trying to cover with Binkley. It's thrown and caught by Townsend. We tried to go for the pick, but we weren't there in time. So it's a first down for Auburn in a terrible position for us. Fully expecting the run on up the middle on this one. We are going to run commit, but it's a play action. And that's a man wide open. Binkley, good tackle and open space, but not before giving up 11. Man, we haven't faced a crowd that gets the audio this laggy in a hot minute. But on this first down, they're going to step back, looking to throw. Quarterback scrambling, and he's going to get sacked in the backfield for a loss of six. This puts us in a really good spot. Second and 16, tight end in motion, kind of expecting a run. And it is going to be a draw play, but the blocking was okay. They only got two yards at the end of it, though. And this is a chance to get off the field. This could be really dangerous. Got the quarter zones deep on this cover four, trying to see if anything we can do. Know that this is going to be a pass. What can we do to stop him over the middle? Trying to stop it. We've done enough, or have we? Man, that was scary. 12 yards, but it's fourth and three. And I don't know if I should trust this, but the Auburn kicking team is out on the field looking to kick this field goal. And, ooh, they kind of got us to jump. Kick is up. And he pushed it right. No good on the field goal. We're going to take over with the chance to score the first points of this game. Well, we know their defense isn't quite as good as their offense. And if we were able to get a stop on one side, maybe we could do some work here. RJ Rivera going to get the ball. Not a whole lot of room. Just had to go up the middle and take the one yard that was allowed. And it's important to remember that we can't just immediately start throwing the football. So we'll try to do whatever it is that we can. As Maurice can't really make his audibles properly. Second and nine. A read option handed off to RJ Rivera. And he's got us in a third and manageable. Question here is going to be, can Maurice Tate complete his first pass of the game when it matters? On third down, he'll step back over the middle. He's got Stone wide open, but he missed him, and it's fourth and three. I hate to be in this position, but we got to punt this football away. We know the defense can get a stop. Oh, that was not a good punt. 
Hopefully he doesn't get under it. He feels it cleanly. Rivera got pancaked and then missed the tackle. And this is great field position for Auburn. Four wide receivers out here on this first down, but I'm fully expecting this one to be a run. Could be a counter. No, it's going to be a handoff. Trying to string him out. Plenty of blocks. Cuts it back inside. And Chris Clark gets a first down immediately. Let's try to get a little bit of pressure on this quarterback. I wouldn't be surprised if they just keep running the football. This one's going to be an option and we'll bring him down. Man, that looked like a face mask, but we get away with it. Definitely pass commit on this one. Second 11 trying to get that pressure. Quarterback feeling the pressure and we do hit him for a loss of four. Second sack of the day. And that was uh, Smith getting in there. I don't know if that's Smith's second sack, but I know it's at least his second tackle for loss as they're going to step back, looking to throw, trying to play safe in the zone. Even this one up is the quarterback and it's Royal. I don't know what he's doing. Not playing the ball. John Jackson finds his man and sets a new school record for passing touchdowns in a career. Uh, that's brutal. Royal was right there, but he just didn't turn his head and find the football. Easily could have deflected that one, if not got the interception. And a bad return from Rivera puts us in a pretty tough spot here. And we're going to open up this drive from the 18 and a half yard line on a little bit of a play action. Trying to look, trying to get outside the pocket. Y could be open. X is wide open if we can get it there. Jeff Fontenot comes down with the ball. Couldn't quite get the spin move, but that's a big 38 yard pickup and immediately gets us uh, into plus territory. So from the 18 to the 44 as we'll bring Stone in motion. Try this triple option. See what we can do. Maurice going to be able to keep it. Probably could have pitched it. But it's just not worth the risk in that situation. Biggest part about that last completion is it helps Maurice start to warm up. And if he's going to make a throw downfield like that, we could be in a good spot. This is a risky one. But Brian Curtis will come down with it and give us a third and manageable. And this third down call entirely relies on the blocking out at the edges. RJ Rivera on the sweep. I don't know if he has the speed to do anything. He's going to lose a couple of yards. Just tried to string it out, but it's not enough. And that's going to be the end of our th first quarter. We'll just go ahead and let this clock burn out. Uh, we will go for this on fourth down to start the second quarter, but we're going to take a breather. Maybe let the crowd cool off a little bit after that stop. Down 7 nothing. Felt like we had a great chance to be in the lead or at least still be tied. But this is going to be a tough start to the second quarter. I don't know if I like this play call, but we are going to run it. Uh, fourth and six. Let's bring Chris Rutger out of the area because we're going to try a little triple option. See if we can read it right. Maurice, got to get the pitch out. RJ Rivera, stiff arm cheese. Short of the line again. Oh, so close to breaking that one free, but that's a turnover on downs, and Auburn will get the chance to go up two scores. That's a tough break to start the uh, second quarter. This is going to be a run. Trying to bring some pressure with Royal. He got burned earlier. Can't get through the line. And we finally get the tackle after giving up three yards. Fully expect to get burned on this one. We'll see. Second and seven. It's going to be a run up the middle, and we're there with Royal that time for the tackle. Another three yards, and it's third and four. The real question here is, what are we going to do to get burned on this one? Because we know that's coming. It's just a question of how and when. This one going to be a draw, and we get the stop. Never mind. Fourth and two defense holds for the second time on the day. I don't know why. I just don't expect these guys to make the stops that they're making, but then they come out looking really good. And we're going to force them to punt this one away. Could be returned, RJ Rivera, if he can get a couple of blocks. We already know how dangerous he's going to be this season. And oh my gosh, 29 is really fast. Couldn't outrun him. Just an eight yard return there. So the offense really just has like two decent plays. Other than that, it's been kind of a struggle as we're trying to wait. A is wide open and we missed him. Stone has been wide open on two passes and Maurice hasn't hit him either time. The unfortunate part of that is that is likely a touchdown off the board because Maurice... Can't throw an accurate pass early in games. Trying to run a little bit of counter. A spin move from RJ. Got him free for four yards. He's so good, but he just hasn't been able to break off a big one quite yet. And, oh man, this is a tough call. I want to kind of run it here. We're going to give it a shot. Let's uh, 
Motion Stone over. Try to pull the defender out of the area and give it to Bentley on the counter, cutting it north. Fourth and three, I think we're gonna go for this. I do not think that I've made the right play call here, but I've made it anyways. We're looking at a sweep to RJ Rivera. It didn't work the first time. Will it work this time? One block gained, and he's short of the line to gain. Turnover on downs number two of the day. The blocking just not quite there. Well, we've given up the ball in field goal range, but we know that their kicker is liable to miss, so I'm not too worried about it. We're bringing pressure on this one. First and 10. Looks like it could be a triple option. They'll hand it off towards the edge and look at the blocking more with a touchdown saving tackle potentially. But it's 13 yards by Tyson Stewart. We brought the pressure. We knew what play was coming and still we couldn't do anything about it. And they are inside the red zone just like that. And the defensive shift might have caused them to jump. So a little false start backs them up. At this point, I'm definitely expecting... The pass. We'll see what we can do to defend to get it. No, it's a draw. And it's a stop for a loss. Second and 17. Even if we give up a field goal, that's not terrible. See what we can do. Coming out in the dime package. Trying desperately to stop this. And they're actually going to run the ball. This could be huge, Logan. That's a great tackle. It's a third and nine. Still very gettable for these guys. But at the same time, it's going to be a lot more manageable for our coverage. We'll see what we can do. Expecting them to step back and throw this one. Trying to get some pressure on the quarterback. And it's over the middle. Caught by Jude. Inside the 10 for a first and goal. This has gotten pretty scary pretty quick. First and goal. Looking at the blitz. We hit the quarterback. And we're going to drop the running back after he pitches it for a loss of four. Worried about the safeties. I feel like this could just be an easy one. As Logan is there. Oh, I was expecting an easy pass into the end zone, but they run it and we stuff them at the line. And now I guess I'd have to be worried about our uh, our coverage on a play like this because it has been pretty atrocious. Or, oh my gosh, it's an out route wide open. That hurts. Auburn's quarterback now six of six with a pair of touchdowns. They have not had any problems throwing the football and we have had problems doing just about everything else. We are by no means out of this game yet, though. A minute and 45 left in the half, and we get the ball to start the third quarter. So as long as we don't get torched, we could be in a good spot as Brian Curtis dropped a rare, accurate pass from Maurice Tate. I threw that one a little bit earlier than I had wanted to, so he didn't quite get as much separation. But still, you got to hold on to those. Let's put Stone in motion, stepping back, looking to throw over the middle as Morrison again. It's an incomplete pass. When our guys are wide open, it's incomplete. When they're covered, we finally get it towards them. But then I guess they drop it and it's an incomplete as well. So third and ten, just like that. Hoping for the best, stepping back. We pretty much have to throw over the middle. Chris Rutger was open, but it was again inaccurate. And it's fourth and a mile. So there's no way that I can justify doing anything but punting this football away. We'll try to cheese the crap out of it, but I think that's fieldable. Can we sneak it past him? Good bounce. Beautiful bounce inside the 20. He's going to pick it up, and Rivera pushes him out of bounds at the 14. That was a huge punt. Absolutely flipped the field position with a minute and 25. We'll see what we can do. I keep running the man. I don't know if we have the skill, though, to do it because they have just been torching us. Smith, look at that. Now we're out wide open. <laughs> That's unexcusable. Something has to change here. I don't know what it is, but something. As we'll try to bring pressure. Quarterback scrambling. Whitaker hits him, but he stays on his feet. Moore gets his tackle broken and then gets him on the second effort. But we gave up 16 yards on the quarterback run. And that's one of the problems of having a quarterback that can scramble and is also a just good carrying the football. I was trying to strip the football a little bit there as that's a slant wide open to Calvin Jackson for nine yards. So the Jackson to Jackson connection has been wide open all game long as there is a minute and nine left. They did take a timeout and quarterback's going to scramble again. Look at all the space in the world. Please try to force a fumble and we do so, but they have a wide receiver there to pick it up. And we can't catch a break just yet. Thought we had it finally, but it's not the case. Well, I'm just going to continue to try to bring pressure on this quarterback inside the pocket and continue to try to strip the ball because we need to create a turnover at this point in the game. Auburn takes their second timeout after that one. 
Again, expecting a pass. It is second and a mile. 57 seconds left in the first half. Trying to bring that pressure with Smith. Plenty of time. Quarterback scrambling again. Tackle is made. And I'm going to take a timeout on third and eight. I have absolutely no faith in our coverage to protect here, but you never know. Pressure. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen a man more wide open in years. John Jackson now 9 of 9 through the air as we might have given them too much time to work with. Quarterback scrambling once again. And we did get him at the line of scrimmage. I guess that's lucky. Trying to hang out in the lurk here. I'm not sure it's going to do anything. Quarterback scrambling and gets hit with the sack. Again, I'm taking the timeout. I need a chance to score in this half. It's third and a mile as we'll try to do anything we can to stop this one. We know to expect the quarterback to scramble if he gets into pressure or he could just throw it to the end zone and it is dropped. Not intercepted, unfortunately, but the first incompletion was into like triple coverage. And with 19 seconds and a kicker that has already missed one, we're putting the punt return team out and hoping that RJ Rivera can give us a kick six and some life. And oh, that is going to hurt them tremendously. A false start from the offensive line there. That five yards could prove to be crucial. So the kicking team still out on the field. And this is a very, very long kick. 56 yards or so. Field the ball by Rivera. We're going to bring it out of the end zone with the clock winding down on the half. RJ might have the corner. Just really one guy to beat. Can he get the right blocks? If there's no penalties, RJ Rivera out of stamina. Four, three, two, one second left in the half. And it's going to be a kick six the longest way possible. But we will find our way into the end zone in this first half. And it, of course, is going to be RJ Rivera. That is a tough way to score our first points but we will absolutely take it and this might be the most dangerous thing that i could try right now but we're gonna go for an onside kick and if we can tackle him really quickly well no harm no foul there as the clock expires i was kind of hoping we could force them into another really long field goal attempt and try to run two back within the last 15 seconds of the half alas though 14 7 at the half I don't know. Offense has really struggled. The defense has gotten their stops, but if the offense can't do anything, it doesn't matter how many times the defense takes the field. Eventually, they're going to get burned. Auburn's quarterback has one incompletion. He's scrambling like a madman and is being successful in doing it. So, I mean, this all comes down to Maurice State. Like always, if he was accurate, we would be potentially winning this game. But since he's not, it's just been a real struggle. So that's our second half key. Get Maurice into a comfortable rhythm. And we might have a chance to win this one on the road against the number three team in the country. RJ is back to return to start this half. So you never know with some really good blocking from Jody Gentry out towards the edge. This could be really good or <laughs> it'd be really bad. I thought I saw some daylight there, but we just got shoved backwards. And we are starting this drive from a pretty tough spot. But just going to throw a little screen pass to RJ. Even if it's really not good for much. I mean, heck, this could be a touchdown. RJ Rivera caught up to by either a linebacker or a DN there. Number 50 is zooming. At the very least, it's Maurice's third completion of the day. So definitely needed that one. Bentley comes in. We'll see who we're looking at on this play action. Trying to get outside the pocket. B's open. <laughs> what was that, Maurice? Oh, my goodness. That might be actually the worst throw I've ever seen in this game. We'll try a toss play to RJ, make it a third and manageable. But my goodness, this is an absolute struggle. Rivera has nowhere to go on the edge, and it's just a gain of one. And I hate everything about this, but I have to go back to the slip screen. It's the only thing I think that could work. And it's to Derek Bentley. So a little bit more scary. It's caught Bentley. Not able to break a tackle. One and a half yards gain there. It's fourth and seven. And you already know we have to kick this one away. And we'll just hope that we can get another good little bit of cheese. It's definitely full power. It should hit the ground with a good bounce. Please die. Please die. Oh, it bounces into the end zone. That's a little bit unfortunate. But at least we get them down at the 20. And the problem here is that at the end of the half, we just had to worry about passing and maybe the quarterback scrambling. But for here, we for sure have to worry about the run. We tried to run, commit up the middle. Pressure got there and it wasn't in time. Green has to make this tackle. Oh my gosh. 80 yards into the end zone. Auburn's 
uh, I can't stop him here. John Jackson, 10 of 11 for three touchdowns. They're going to be back up to a 14-point lead. I guess the only good part is that uh, they scored quickly. I don't know. I mean, it gives us more time to figure out our problems, right? At least offensively. RJ Rivera trying to get a decent return. Finally gets out past the 25. And we are going to hand it off to him here on first down. On the counter, a play that typically works pretty well. He's got some blocking downfield. And you know, as fast as he is, this Auburn team is really, really quick. It feels like every opportunity that we've had to break one free, they have somebody catching up to us in a hurry. Almost 300 yards of offense, by the way, for them. B is wide open. B is really wide open. Jody Gentry, good catch. Finally a good throw. That's a good first down. Well, Maurice, not quite warm yet, but uh, RJ Rivera is starting to get there, and he's going to get the ball, cut it to the outside, the spin move. I don't know. It's okay. We got five yards out of it. We knew that this game was going to be more difficult than the UCF one, but man, I was hoping that we could have a few more big plays as we will look to pass on this one. Right bumper could be wide open, heaving it up. Bentley can't come down with it in the tip drill. Auburn has the interception and a convoy running the other way. And they're going to get the first turnover of the game and the ball at about midfield. Thought that we had that one over the head. Derek Bentley couldn't hold on. The safety, a good job breaking it up. And then just the good awareness from Love to come down with that one. I was actually really surprised that we were going to have a semi-accurate throw there from Maurice. But obviously I was wrong about that one as we bring pressure and stop them for a loss of four on first down. And I feel like in general we've actually done okay on these first downs. It's just the second down and the third down where we start to run into problems but this second down it's a sack for a loss of five and it's third and 19 and i'm just gonna say it now if we don't get the stop here we're in trouble we're only rushing to all the time in the world for the quarterback how how on earth we had nine guys in coverage third and 19 turns into a first and 10. That is absolutely brutal. Trying to get Royal in the right position. Quarterback throwing it on the run, and it's Royal who had a chance again at the pick, but just doesn't have the awareness. So they are back in the red zone, looking to make it a 21-point game in the third quarter as we do commit to the run stop on first down and get the stop. Problem is, if we get them into... Uh, any sort of passing situation our coverage just isn't even close to good enough to get the stop this one thankfully thrown away only the second incompletion of the day for john jackson worst part of it all here is that uh now it's a third and eight in the red zone looking to pass it's a slip screen please they throw it up we can't get the interception oh that was scary i thought they converted that for sure but it is fourth and four and it's the field goal formation you don't expect auburn to miss this one They've had some problems, and wow, they're special teams. Uh, Got to get it together, because that's another false start on them. All right, I'm going to commit to trying to block this one. Since they got that penalty and we can afford to give it back, send it. Oh. <laughs> we were easily off. Kick is good. They would have declined it anyways. And, well, at least number 19, Minnesota, gets upset by Colorado. But it's 24-7 to with two minutes left in the third. And we have a lot of work to do. A touchdown on this drive would start to be really good for us. RJ still on his feet, but he falls. Trips after a 30-yard return. Had a chance to break free. And the problem is we're in such obvious passing situations that we have to keep passing. But obviously it hasn't worked out all that well for us. Outside the pocket, tried to get rid of it. A was wide open. I was just trying to throw the ball away, though. And it's a sack for a loss of eight on first down. Really feels like there's almost nothing that we can do. This one's scheming, looking for Jody Gentry, and he's running the wrong way for a little bit. Finally figures it out and gets seven yards. That could have been a touchdown if he started the right direction, though. That's his second catch of the day, and now it's Maurice Tate in a very clutch situation. Needs to make a good throw. A could be open. Stone comes down with it through the contact, and the drive will stay alive. We're going to go into the hurry up, try to make everything we can out of this third quarter. Maurice keeping it on the read options. Got some blocks and another first down on the ground. It's important to remember that this offense has not found the offense all game long. A slip screen called here. We do give it to RJ. He's got a couple of blocks, but most importantly, it's a completion for the quarterback. 
And again, we step back looking to throw. Hey, that's a risky pick. Oh, my gosh. He wasn't running the route I thought he was. One of six on our third downs, and the one conversion came earlier on this drive. And I'm going to say it was a pretty lucky one. We're going to look to the sky and hope for the best. Right bumper could be open. B could be open. But look at the space in front of Maurice. I can't risk letting him throw the football when we could just run for 16 yards. That one definitely going to tire him out. And the clock continues to burn down in this third quarter. But we're going to keep looking to the air over the middle. A risky throw held on to by Palmer. Maybe we could get a couple more plays here as we're ticking inside 10 seconds. And the clock winding down, trying to get one more read option off in this half. I just got to hand it off to Derek Bentley. Didn't want to risk having Maurice get, uh, you know, have a huge shot taken on him there. I think it might have been the better read. We're down a lot. 17 points into the fourth quarter. This is nearly impossible, but we're going to give it our best shot. It is a third down to start this fourth quarter just inside the red zone. So we'll see what we can do there. Motion stone, get a defender out of the immediate area and then hand this one off to RJ Rivera. He's got some blocks, he's got some space, and he's got the first down. Anything that we can do to delay this one is good. We're looking for Rivera on the little swing screen. I don't see anything, just got to throw that one away. No intentional grounding, we're still alive. They were bringing some really scary pressure on that one, so I didn't feel confident. I do like Jody Gentry's matchup. We'll see the safety. Ooh, I don't like that. Over the middle. Y is wide open. Back in the end zone. It's Chris Rutger just leaking free over the top of the safeties. They didn't notice him. And finally, the offense gets into the end zone. And this could be a controversial decision. But I think the analytics would say that we go for two in this spot. So that's what we're looking for. I want Jody and Chris. Everybody basically run into the right. We'll snap it. We'll look to roll out to the right. Plenty of space. Waiting. Why? Oh, it's dropped. If I had another half a second, maybe. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out. And we're at that point where we're going to try to steal a possession. And hope for the best. Kick the onside kick. Good amount of power on that one. And they do recover it. This is actually going to be a decent return. But at the very least, if they're scoring on every possession, now they're going to take a little bit less time off the clock. We're bringing what is essentially the house on this first down. First and 10, hoping for the best. They do hand it off. We rushed a lot of guys to give up six yards. That's pretty brutal. There is some good news for us. Uh, they're in the hurry up still. Maybe we can beat them with that. Quarterback on the option, breaks a tackle. Still on his feet, still on his feet, and it's a first down. Oh my goodness. Every single chance that we've had to maybe make a stop just gets burned. They're going to continue to run the ball. We brought pressure up the middle, but it doesn't find them. I just don't see how we win this if the defense can't even stop them at the line. Definitely can feel the pressure mounting on this drive as this one's going to be an option. And we will hit the quarterback for a loss of two. Brings up a third and seven, but we have had not had luck. They're going to go five wide. I'm going to try to jam them up here at the line. Expecting something pretty bad. It's a screen over the middle. One tackle gets broken on the mid screen, and it's a first and goal. We had the stop. Oh, my goodness. That is so brutal. The one opportunity that we needed. Trying to bring some pressure up the middle. That one finally incomplete. Pressure got there. Maybe forced a bad throw. This has just been so, so difficult. Second and goal. Looks like it's going to be a handoff out towards the edge. A lot of white jerseys in the area. Enough to get the stop, and it will be third and goal. If we can manage to hold these guys to a fourth down and a field goal, we might still have a chance. Expect them to have somebody open. Quarter of the end zone. And we don't get there in time. It's a touchdown for Auburn. 31 to 13. I think that might be enough. I don't see us coming back. Jody Gentry is back to return. RJ Rivera too tired from all the returning he's done so far in this game. But Jody, a decent little return out past the 30 isn't bad. And with 404 left in this game, our offense still, I feel like, has not been found all day long. So we'll hope for the best. Derek Bentley still in it, running back, stepping back. B could be wide open. This is a really risky throw. Rutger can't come down with it. I thought that corner was going to stick on the out route and we had him burned, but he was too smart for me. If Chris was able to get to that one, you know that this game is rigged. Uh, second and 10. Out route. 
not held on to by Jeff Fontenot. Risky throw, but it almost paid off. Just like that, it's third and a mile. And I'm not feeling at all confident. So who knows what's going to happen on this one. Stepping back, looking to throw. This is four down territory. Fontenot holds on to it through the contact, though. No fourth down necessary. We're just going to keep throwing these up and hoping that some sort of miracle can happen. Again, this is a 50-50. If we come down with it, it is a miracle. Fontenot had it in his hands, but he dropped it. The way the safety played that, if he came down with it, it was a walk-in touchdown. Unfortunately, not the case. As Goodwin is in as our running back, and we will step back. Why over the middle is open. Morris catches it and breaks a tackle. That'll stop the clock as he gets a 15-yard first down. And I am very aware that this is almost certainly game over, but we are going to fight until the end because this matters so much to us. Outside the pocket, waiting, trying to look. No! Why stop running? I thought he was going to keep going. I am so lucky that's not game over with a pick. Maurice Tate, 12 of 25 through the air. And it should have been game over. But we fight to see another down, waiting over the middle. This is four down territory. Derek Bentley gets five. And I really wish that we didn't have to just run in the hurry up, just slinging the football the entire game. Trying to get outside the pocket, cutting it back in. They played that perfectly. Nothing I can say about that one. Glock is moving after all that, and it's still fourth down. This you can't feel good about. We'll try it anyways. Stepping outside the pocket, trying to scramble. Rolling out plenty of space. Maybe a chance for Maurice Tate to get out of bounds and stop the clock with 2.50 to go. That rollout to the left almost never works, but it worked that time. Well enough at least as, again, we'll step back over the middle. That's picked. Oh, Stone held onto it. Okay, well, I guess we got to keep the hurry up going because I cannot allow any seconds to burn off the clock. And we can't afford to take the timeouts yet. I don't think this is the right play, but we'll give it a shot. If Maurice takes a shot, he probably fumbles the football outside the pocket. A could be open. Caught for a first and goal. Somehow we're still not out of it. Now here's where I'm curious if we have them even a little bit bamboozled. We're looking at the counter to Bentley. Blocking is too good. Oh my god, there's nothing that we could have done there. Well, let's hope for the best again. Stepping back, looking for Jody Gentry. Needs all the time in the world. Gets free and somehow catches it. Amazing reception from Jody Gentry. Safety just missed it. Definitely got to go for two on this one. And then, of course, we need a, a really good uh, onside kick recovery. Yeah, I don't like any of this. We're going to try it anyways. Over the middle. Fontenot. You're going to tell me he wasn't in? Oh, that is so brutal. Oh, wait. Okay. No, they say he was in. That was really anticlimactic from the presentation perspective, but it's a 10-point game with 2.09 left. Again, good power on that onside kick, but they just have too good of a hand steam at this point. Well, they're in clock burn mode, so this needs to be about as perfect as you could expect it. They're going to run the football, trying to strip them because we need to create something, and, oh, they're going to... Yeah, that's game over. <laughs> clock burning. I... Uh, could have made the tackle for loss and taken the timeouts, but we already know what they're going to try to do, so might as well try and uh, get a strip. Time that one perfectly. Guess we'll take the first timeout. Again, the clock will continue to burn on this one, so we'll see if we can do anything to slow these guys down. Any sort of sack would be nice, but tackles aren't terrible either. And they are going to go for this, I think. I would not expect anything less. If we can get pressure on this quarterback, it would be fantastic. But I don't have that kind of confidence. Pressure, it's a slip screen. And he's hit as he's throwing, so it's incomplete. Fourth and 11. Almost no chance that this is returnable. But we're going to let them kick this field goal. He's already missed a couple. This one's going to be right down the middle, though. It's a 13-point game with a minute and 20 left. A touchdown and a quick onside kick recovery. You never know. We still could have some sort of chance here. Chris Rutger taking the return. Oh, that was bad. Should have just kept going north. Well, let's see what our guys can do here. Stepping back to throw. I'm heaving it deep. First play to Rutger. He came. Oh, he dropped it. I thought he had it. Oh, <laughs> I just need one of those 50-50 balls to go our way, and we've been so close so many times. 
Just not enough. Second and 10, stepping back outside the pocket. Somebody could have been open. It's Maurice Tate getting out of bounds. No, they say he was in bounds. So it's third and a mile and a half with the clock moving. That is so brutal. Morris coming in motion, trying to step back. That's picked off, isn't it? Bentley can't come down with it. I was panicking with the clock moving. I made a bad read. And now the game really is on the line. Fourth and four. Seeing what we can do. Uh, X is open. Chris Rutger holds on to it. Stays on his feet, which is okay. Gets the first down. The fact that we are even thinking about having a chance to win this game is a miracle in my eyes. Again, stepping back. Maurice Tate is tired as they come. Nobody open. We're going to scramble, take the yards, and we'll get out of bounds. A chance to make some subs. That puts us over 100 yards rushing. I guess that's okay. Maurice is starting to heat up now, which I guess is good, but we've got every backup and their mother on the field right now because everybody is so tired from the constant hurry up. Again, Maurice outside the pocket. And we take the sack. That uh, might be game. Can't afford to take the time out here, but they're not letting me run the hurry up. And that's why. Uh, Maurice injured. Albert Johnson in at QB with 20 seconds left in the game. We're just going to have to heave one deep. A could be open. No way he gets to it. GG's Auburn. Will return soon for Maurice State. So we are going to bring him back in for this game. Obviously, we can't afford to have him sitting out on any play. And at this point, it's just uh, hoping for a miracle. Bring Palmer in a little bit and hope that somebody can get open. Waiting. Chris Rutger would have been there. Got to take the time out. I don't think there's enough time now to score and kick the onside kick, but you never know, I guess. And we would be stupid not to try. Obviously throwing it deep, and that one's going to be intercepted to end this game. A real shame. We had our chances, man. That one first interception they got, if that just harmlessly hits the ground, I think we are still in with a shot to win, but the offense took almost the entire game to find the end zone for the first time. So we definitely didn't play well enough to win this game. And my goodness, their quarterback was uh, the greatest quarterback of all time today. No wonder he is the Heisman front runner. Auburn wins it. Couple of missed field goals, but John Jackson, 15 to 19 for 267 and four touchdowns. Nothing that we could do to slow him down, even as he was scrambling with the football. And I don't know. I mean, we didn't expect to win this game, but that was just brutal. That really hurt. There's a couple of plays that make me think, what if in this game, obviously that interception off the tip drill, but their first passing touchdown where we had Royal right there, but he doesn't turn his head and make a play on the ball. And then there was another one late in the game at the back of the end zone on the left side where basically the same thing happened. Uh, who knows? Maybe if he makes a play on the ball, those are incomplete. We can hold them to field goals or just get the ball back on those. And it's a completely different ball game. 93 rushing yards for Auburn with 267 through the air. Uh, no turnovers is the big thing. We almost forced one uh, on the quarterback, but as much as he ran, as much as we hit him, just couldn't get him to drop the ball when it mattered. And, uh, you know, Maurice Tate is our offensive player of the game, but it's hard for me to give it to him when he's about 50% through the air and has a couple of turnovers. I mean, he missed wide open guys for touchdowns. There's a couple of those as well. You just, uh, you hit the wide open man deep and we're up six. So who knows? I do know that this loss will most likely kick us out of the top 25, but because it's the number three team, maybe we'll get lucky and just drop and stay within that 25. But I'll go ahead and advance the week and see, hope for some upsets as well on the road at Auburn. Uh, we're going to go on the road at Clemson next week, and it's going to be just as difficult, I bet. All right, so where do we drop to? 24th. Clemson stays at number two as they won their first game. And again, they're about a 90 overall team. They're favored to win as they should be. And they beat an FCS team by 10. I don't know if that makes me confident or not, but things could be worse. Things could be better. And we've got our top 25 polls to look at. I know that Nebraska was able to beat Oklahoma which is good news for us because it's a Big Ten team beating a Big 12 team and we need the Big 12 to do worse. Uh, any other losses in this area? There's Oklahoma. There's TCU losing to UCF. So that's good news for us. 
Uh, and then it's us, and Minnesota dropped out. So it's certainly not great news. It's also not terrible news. Unfortunately, that is going to have to do it for this episode. As a reminder, again, there's a new perk for Tier 1 and Up channel members where you can rename a prospect. Uh, who knows? Maybe we recruit them. Maybe they end up at a powerhouse like Clemson or Auburn. If you're not already a member, though, that link's in the description as well as usually underneath the video. Uh, if you haven't already, please like the video. That's an even easier way to help support the channel uh, and subscribe while you're at it then you can head back down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv slash goonmaster. It's also links to my Twitter, our community discord and the college football revamp mod. If you're trying to get it for yourself, all that being said though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is goonmaster. You guys are the gray boys and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning. And we'll see you later. Adios.